work to do man i got a freaking mess over here guys what is up welcome back to the channel wiring we get into it now we really get into it i'm a little excited because that means we're gonna be really close to starting this thing up but before we do that i've done a lot of recon a lot of research because um there's really two different systems working in this um standalone harness not like psi psi has one system you plug it in you set it and forget it you good baby but with this GM harness, it also obviously requires that US shift controller, transmission controller. Remember we talked about that in a few videos back. Now that we're really close to really um, getting down to the nitty gritty of this thing with the wiring, I wanna show you guys what I got going on. Yeah, a little bit of an organized mess here. This is GM's fuse box, right? GM's fuse box. I actually took it out of the housing slash casing, whatever you wanna call it, enclosure. Um, that's this guy right here right and then you have the lid that goes over it now that actual lower portion i should say that middle portion lives into this bottom portion right it actually does come apart but you guys are going to have to take a little screwdriver and there's a little these little two little not actually four notches one two three four and all four corners you're going to have to work it out of there just be very careful there's these little tabs that you got to work out but it does come out the reason why i took mine out because i wasn't happy with how it looked for one and then two the, the bulkiness of it but not to mention mounting um i got three holes down there you see those three holes i got those three holes drilled and what that's going to do is that box we're going to have it live right here so don't worry about the tail you guys i just kind of have the tail right there just for mock-up purposes but that'll basically live on this wheel tub right here just like that so with those uh holes there that allows us to give us something to mount it to um because if you look around the box there's not really anything nicely made around this box and it really drives me nuts so i'm going to end up having to come up with some kind of beauty cover for this thing just to kind of clean this box up because i'm not happy with that but that's another day so what we're going to do is we're going to mount this to this fender here and then we'll put that back in here but it is a pain in the ass because you guys can see how much of these wires really stick out they're just kind of bulky ugly but all this stuff has to live back inside there and it's not ideal not to mention uh i took it apart just because i wanted to see if we can also these are i have them covered right now i have these looms on here because i'll tell you why because gm actually has these living outside the box just like this more or less and it just drove drove me nuts really so i was trying to figure out how we can tuck them inside but there's no way because there's no room for those to live inside because of the mess that's already here but what we also did you guys see this going on this is my little sub harness that we've kind of made up now when you guys get this uh harness from out of the box i should say when it comes out of the box you're going to have a few wires right you're going to have a blue wire just like this guy probably like a 10 gauge wire and then you're gonna have a gray wire those are your main two outputs for your fuel pump and for your fan relay or i should say fans electric fans but blue one it should be for your fan fuel pump should be gray now i if you're like me we're running dual fans you know we like to run dual fans that's our biggest fans you know but they only give you one output so it's kind of silly to me that's the reason why we got all this craziness going on what i did is that gm does give you space to get this towel out of the way they give you space to add another relay or two so that's exactly what we did is we actually pinned more another relay into it so this is where the actual relays sit at so what we did is we had to buy connectors and they were paying the butt to track down uh i will try to put down in the description below a link to these an amazon link you can probably get them there but you do have to buy them in bulk but so you have to pin your own connectors slash relay and that is the nice part that you can put it all in the same box but it is a pain in the butt now i had to add another one power i should say you're gonna have to add power you're gonna have to add ignition you're gonna have to add um the trigger wire which is control and then obviously your output so what i did this is why this other wire is here because we took power from directly from the fuse box right where uh these guys are coming from but this red wire here now that's the output for the other fan so now we're gonna have both of these going to one fan each now but what the most important thing is actually there's two wires really that you really have to worry about and 
So if you follow the blue wire, that'll tell you what relay it is, right? And you're gonna have a trigger wire from GM. Usually it's a ground slash trigger from the ECU and that's gonna be this little green guy here. Now what you're gonna have to do with that guy, you're gonna have to pull that guy out and actually splice in, or I should say recrimp it with two wires coming out of it so you can piggyback off that ignition, no, I'm sorry, not ignition, but that trigger wire slash ground from the ECU into the other relay. So you're really gonna have to jump it over and use it for the same pin on the other side of the relay. So when that ECU wire there, it actually talks to that relay as well and it turns on both fans. So it'll just turn on both fans at the same time. You definitely won't have two different fan controllers, but you'll have at least both fans running at the exact same time. But not only we did that, you see this little blue wire guy right here. If you guys remember when we did the harness for the actual engine bay, that guy, the bolt connector, we came out and we had our little bundle here for our fans and all control and all that stuff. Well, if you remember, we pre-wired a wire that runs all the way to the trinary switch. So that little blue wire that's right here now, that's our blue wire that comes from our trinary switch. And it also is your basically your trigger wire. And that one you're gonna splice in exactly as well into that same trigger wire for your second relay. So what that does, it'll basically, when that trigger happens slash from the vintage control module or relay, I should say, that's basically gonna act like the trigger for the e from like the ECU in a sense. So that'll actually turn on that particular relay and actually kick on the other fan so when your ac is running you got at least one fan on um so that's how we did it for this particular harness i normally do them for both fans but on the psi harness um i have a video on that trinary switch wiring you guys if you guys are interested in that i'll put it down in the description below with the more details on that one but that's really what we had to do to make sure everything is working together so we have that, right? We got we added the, the fan relay, we added the trinary switch. You really have to do that. Make sure you uh, do that stuff. If not, you're gonna have to run separate relays, something like this, on um, just anywhere close to the front end. But let me put this box back together. We'll mount it here, and then we'll actually go over the wires that are, for one, from the transmission controller, and then two, this actual output from the GM harness and the ones you can and can't use. Guys, almost forgot to tell you. Well, actually two things, right? Two things, but the cool one, I should say, is look at that bad boy right there. Yeah, buddy. Just got this thing, man, 3D printer. I, I did not realize how freaking cool these things are, but I will say this, super learning curve, a little bit of a hassle, a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it's gonna just make a world of difference when it comes to just creating stuff. Very excited about that. Look, I made you guys a little bunny, huh? Huh? Made you a little that, a little that. That's kind of cool. That's for the kids. But um, let me show you what I did make because it relates to this video. Is you guys already know? I just when certain things look out of place for me, it just it bugs the crap out of me. And I came up with this guy right here. Look at that. That's 3D printed. Isn't that freaking cool? As a matter of fact, I've already altered it, messed with it. You can see right there, I didn't like it. It actually was a little too long right there. So I remelted it and folded it over just to have a better idea to see if it would fit. And then I also cut it down here at the bottom. But I've been messing around with it. And this is really what this is gonna do. It's gonna sit over this guy like that. It'll kind of sit over it. Let's see if I can, something like that. I had to pull that that guy off of there but it would sit kind of like that right and it'll clean up that whole bottom of that panel and it just instead of looking at that ugly box you know what i mean so i think that's gonna look freaking sick but i am gonna alter a few things like i said i don't like how it don't sit too flush down here at the bottom so i might have to fix that and then um reprint it go from there maybe in a different material as well but it's freaking neat so i kind of started with this guy I printed it out of paper, out of cardboard first. You can see this is kind of the template I started with and how that was gonna kind of look in there just to clean up that panel. But I will say two things is, guys, I don't advise, you remember we were talking about adding relays and reusing that actual position? It's a pain in the ass. Um, 
this thing does not like it doesn't want to sit back inside their flush so i do not advise you guys to add the wires and leave them inside maybe just add them or splice them off that uh relay like the trigger wire come off of there and then out into the world and then maybe blue a separate relay here because it's just this this box for whatever reason just not ideal to maintain all those wires it's, i'm having a hell of a time putting it back in but i can't i'm gonna leave it open like this until i get my cover made as well but also i forgot to mention if you guys watched that other video where we're talking about the wire where we started the wire i had the pc i mounted it down lower there in the duck on a bracket i had to relocate it up a little higher you guys can almost see it right there i went up as high as possible because when we went to put the fender well in it was hitting it was actually in the way of this going in so remember that keep that in mind just go all the way up with the pc as far as the mounting location and you'll be fine so we redid that but now we can plug this guy in we'll add power to this real quick plug the battery in we'll turn the key on and then i'll let you know what we have to do as far as these wires go all right guys we got the battery hooked up now we can actually play with this guy here first things first you're gonna have the bolt connector that comes off the gm harness and you're also gonna have a matching mate to go along with it now you are gonna need those pin connectors they do not come part of the harness or kit that's these guys here. I will try to put down in the description below a part number or something or a link even to those guys there. Now, this sub harness from the transmission control, you're going to have grounds, which is we're going to go directly to the cylinder head. We're going to mate those up and go directly to the cylinder head. There is a ground on here, but we're not going to use that. We want to maximize the um, best ground possible, and that's what the GM, uh, I'm sorry, that's what the US shift harness specifies as well they actually want you to go directly to the ecu but that's not going to happen we're not cutting into that but now you're going to have a red wire coming off of there that is your ignition hot you definitely got an ignition here that's that pink wire we'll go into that guy there and then you're going to have a yellow wire which is your tack signal and that one is for the transmission controller as well the tack signal is going to be a white wire from gm but we're going to end up having to share that wire as well because we need it for something else. We need it for a fuel pump control module. I will talk about that later in the next video. So what we'll do is when we crimp that connector on here, we'll crimp an extra wire to go back to our transmission controller. We'll talk about that later. Now, the TPS signal, this green one here, that one's one of the most important here. And that's why we're going to do is we're going to test um, voltage. We're looking for the largest sweeping voltage coming from the ECU in regards to that throttle position. And that one here on this particular GM harness is gonna be that purple wire according to GM's uh, performance here. But we're gonna go into that wire there and then run this particular jumper all the way inside the cab. And then once we turn the ignition on, we'll take our multimeter and then we'll check the voltage at that wire. So we're looking for a range from uh, 0.5 all the way to four volts. You wanna look for something around that uh, range. That's what the signal requires for that uh, transmission controller. So I'm gonna plug this in, we'll, I'll meet you inside the cab. Now you do wanna have the ignition wire hooked up to the ECU. There is a pink ignition wire, straight ignition. Uh, shouldn't be too crazy. So I got our leads hooked up. We got our signal going to that guy there. We're going to change this guy over to voltage. Make sure it's in DC mode. Take this guy and then we're just going to go to ground. But what we're looking for is that sweeping range voltage when we hit the gas pedal. Uh, let me find a good ground. All right, you guys, I think we got a decent ground, hopefully, right? Uh, you guys can see my meter. Right now we're reading. It's got a voltage on it, right? Which is what we should have. I got a 1.4 volts right now. If you hit the throttle, quote unquote, right down here, right, our gas pedal, it should move in theory, like with the, the amount of pressure, obviously, like if you just slightly hit the gas, quote unquote, right, let's see, we're gonna hit it a little bit at a time. See how it's moving up, it's climbing, it's climbing, it's climbing, it's climbing. And that's what it should do. The more you put on the push on the gas, the higher voltage you should get. And it's definitely going. We're going to go all the way to the floor. Look at that. 4.1 or so. Almost 4.2. 
that's pretty good it's going all the way from 1.4 to 4 point almost 4.2 right that's i mean that's you guys can see that's the kind of signal we're looking for you also can calibrate everything once the car is up and running with the transmission controller so you'll have a setting in there that you'll basically say when the car is at full throttle and then when it's just at idle so you're going to go into the settings and then actually play with the transmission controller there but i went ahead and put the connector on you guys can see connectors are ready to go and we also have that piggyback wire that we're going to end up using as well for that tack signal for the fuel pump control module we'll talk about that later on the next video but all we have left really is to click that guy in there right put that guy in there like so we'll leave it for now because i still got to pull that apart and then our ground wire remember we talked about the ground wire went ahead and put a nice connector on there we'll put that to the back of the head and that's pretty much it for the harness for the gm and the transmission control side of stuff now mind you you're still going to have that fuel pump wire along with your fans so don't forget to wire those up those are pretty self-explanatory quick and easy once again you guys i do not advise you guys to put the or i should say add the relays onto the fuse box and add a bunch more wires because it just makes it really hard to close this box like i said if you have to just piggyback off of it come off of it and then run a separate wire or a separate relay i should say on the outside of it guys tell me what you guys think about that 3d printed stuff i think it's pretty neat i'm actually kind of geeked out about it hopefully we got some more goodies coming to you guys on the websites here soon um with the technology it just keeps getting better and better we definitely got a learning curve for that guy there we still got to print some stuff out here so stay tuned for that but you guys already know hit the subscribe button hit the like button and hit the bell for notifications and stay wrenching